you know, people are very protective of that, understandably, because they've worked hard. But when you're part of this community, people know that you're serious about your business and they know that you're not just taking advantage of them because you're, you're also investing in your business by being part of the community. Hey babes, it's Kayla Craft with the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. I'm a mom of three littles, ER nurse turned self-made millionaire and lifestyle entrepreneur. I am bringing you inspiring stories, business and mindset tips to help you be shameless in pursuing your ambitions. Hey, mommy millionaires. And I know there's a lot of guys that have been listening in. So hey, daddy billionaires, that's what we're going to call you. Today is going to be a killer episode with my brand protection attorney. She has a virtual law firm specializing in copyrights and trademarks. After less than a year at a large law firm working with large businesses, Andrea realized her true passion was helping small businesses embrace and protect their intellectual property. She has over 80 clients and all over the United States. She travels and helps people. Um, She is quickly becoming the go-to brand protection attorney for modern day entrepreneurs, protecting everything from their brand names to their courses and posts. You guys are going to love this episode. Let's tune in now. Hey, mommy millionaires. All right. I am freaking out about today's episode because just like you guys heard in the intro, Andrea has been hooking me up with my brand new stuff that I have going on. And she is the person to talk to when it comes to trademarking and copywriting things online and in your business. And so I'm so excited to have her here today. She is a mom. She travels all over the country doing events and helping people. And she's in the mastermind that I'm in. That's how we met. And I just love her energy because like she's super laid back and you wouldn't know that she's like this like really bomb attorney. And then you ask her like a business question and she's like, oh yeah, it's like blah, 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 blah. she's speaking gibberish. Like I don't really understand it, but the way that she makes, it's just like, wow. Okay. You are smart. So all of you guys, you need to understand how to protect yourself online. Okay. So that's why I want you to listen in to today's episode and let's get into it. So welcome, Andrea. Thank you so much. That was an awesome intro. (laughs) Hey, you know what? I'm so honored that you took the time out of your busy schedule to be on a podcast because I know you've, you've just had clients back to back to back. Um, you were just saying, I've never been this busy and I made the comment, you probably prayed for days like today. So tell us a little bit about where you came from, because you weren't always this attorney that was working from home and making deals happen. Yeah, yeah. So I, I used to work at a large law firm, you know, big law, everything you see on TV, you work forever and you miss out on family events, blah, blah, blah. I did that absolutely hated my life. And actually while I was in law school, I had my own women's clothing store. So I had my online boutique and then I opened a brick and mortar store. And then when I started at the firm, that big firm, I sold the store. And I, cause I was like, you know, this is my dream job. I'm just going to stick with this job. Cause you know, I was out the gate making six figures. I thought oh, <laughs> life doesn't get any better than this, but I also had my first kid in law school. And so I was by far the youngest parent at the firm. And I quickly realized, you know, if I ever want to see my kid or my husband, then this is not going to work out for me. And when I had the clothing store, I actually had a large network of other boutique owners, business owners, and they always contacted me for trademark work. So eventually I, you know, ever, I usually told people the firm's too expensive or, you know, we can help you, but the rates are just outrageous. So well, finally I had somebody who's like, you know, what? I don't care what the rates are. I just have to get this trademark. I have to get it done. So we had this whole onboarding process. And when I was trying to bring her in as a client, I had a partner at the firm tell me, you know, we don't want this client because it's not 
a quality client. And she was, you know, multi six figure clothing boutique. It didn't have a problem paying the fees. She just needed a trademark and she wanted it done. Well, my firm did not want her as a client. So I, they're like, but you know what? We'll just take her because, you know, you already told her. And I was like, you know what? Forget it. So I went back and I told her, I was like, listen, I am going to be on my own in a few months. And at that, like, it was that moment when I had that conversation with the partner, when I made the decision to go out on my own, like I'd never even thought about it before. But at that moment, I was just like, you know what? Somebody has to serve these people. So mm-hmm. I am going to be that person. So I literally planned my exit from that moment forward, left the firm, launched my firm, and things have been booming ever since because there really is a need to protect small businesses. Mm. Wow. So that's so interesting because I always ask people like, did you know the moment that you were going to start your business? You remember it. You remember it. But was that hard? Because there has to be like, you know, being a part of a firm is kind of like having a safety net. Like, you know, they're going to be bringing in clients. Like you have basically like this plan set out before you like, oh, one day you could possibly become partner. Like, you know, it's like deciding right then and there that you're going to definitely for sure have a different future, right? It's going to be messy and you're not sure how it's going to look. So what, what were some of the thoughts that were going on in your head? Um, so number one was my husband's going to kill me because he actually, when I started at the firm, he became a stay at home dad. So he was active duty. He was an officer in the army. He was active duty and he kind of, he supported me during law school and he was tired of always traveling. So we said, okay, whenever I start at the firm, you'll stay home with our son. And (laughs) we, we kind of agreed, like you'll stay home and figure out what you really want to do with your career. Well, then, you know, just seven months later, I was like, I don't want to stick it out. I don't want to be at this firm. So I know he, like, he definitely was not happy about it, but it was just one of those things where I was like, I'm not sticking this out. I'm not happy. You're not happy. Like we are, I mean, we were 26, 27 at the time. I was like, we're entirely way too young to be unhappy. Mm -hmm. So Finally, he got on board and we did make a cross country move because we were kind of not around any family. So we moved to Houston to be with my family and to have help with childcare. So we said, okay, at the very least, you know, we'll have childcare. We don't have to pay for that. And we just, we made it work. We said, okay, we're going all in on this. So he, um, he finally got to figure out what he wanted to do, which was become a teacher. So he is doing that. He absolutely loves it. And now I am just killing it, helping out other business owners. Yeah, dude, that is so inspiring. Okay. And you remind me like a lot of, this is why we get along because you're just very like matter of fact, like, yeah, we we did have to make a cross country move because duh, like we need to childcare. So, you know, it's just very like matter of fact, we did this because we weren't going to let excuses get in our way there. And you just sound like you're a problem solver. And that's somebody that I want on my team. That's why I'm a part of, I'm, that's why you're a part of my team now is because you're a problem solver. I love that. What do you say? Like, have you always been a problem solver? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you'll notice this like with my friends, like my friends are just like me because we, we just, we make stuff happen. Like we, like, just like you said, we don't let excuses get in the way. Mm-hmm. Like we, we notice there's a problem, so we're going to fix it. We're not going to think about what we need to do. We're just going to do it. And that's what I think has really helped me be successful and really just move forward with my business and really grow my business because I'm not afraid to take that extra step and really just put myself out there because Mm -hmm. everybody's stuck. Some, a lot of people are stuck somewhere and that's because they're either analyzing, they're just scared to do something. Listen, nothing in your life is going to change unless you just make that decision and just Mm. do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for all of you mommy millionaires listening in right now that get stuck in analysis mode and overthinking, you heard it from Andrea, just do it. Stop thinking and just do the dang thing. I love that. All right. So, you know, you're getting this new business off the ground. What is the first thing that you did to get your own clients? So the first thing I did, luckily I had the boutique community behind me because they, um, they knew me and I, I knew them and they knew that I could help them. So literally I left work the last day. 
I made a Facebook post and I said, Hey, I'm officially on my own now. And listen, this was the thing. Like I had already like had the logos drawn up everything. So like I left and I launched my firm that night and I I had my first client that night and um, (laughs) I'll never forget it. (laughs) Um, The vintage leopard. She's a clothing boutique. She's a very big uh, boutique. She was my very first client. And literally just from that, having that community of boutique owners really helped me launch my firm and just grow. Okay. So this is an important point that you're making right now. Um, I don't know if you're ma- if you even realize you're making it right now, but for all of you guys listening in, the reason why she was able to become literally a success in one night in her brand new business was because she had a network. How important is networking? So clearly she had made a good reputation for herself in the boutique community. And Andrea, that's what I want to know. How did you network with those people? Were you just, were you always there for them when you guys were building a boutique business together? And is that how they trusted you already? Yeah. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the boutique hub, but they are basically this whole network, this community Mm -hmm. of boutique owners clothing lines, wholesalers. It's this one community and their tagline is the boutique community connected. And I love that. And that whole community is where I got started. And just being part of that community as a boutique owner, always giving value because it thrives on Facebook groups, that community. And a lot of times boutique owners are like, oh, you know, where do you get your vendors? Where do you get this? And you know, people are very protective of that, understandably, because they've worked hard. But when you're part of this community, people know that you're serious about your business and they know that you're not just taking advantage of them because you're, you're also investing in your business by being part of the community. So by being part of that community as a boutique owner, once I became a, um, I guess I'm just now a vendor with them, a resource, they trusted me. They know me. And literally probably 50% of every bo- like all boutiques across the country know who I am because of that community. Wow. That is so powerful. So powerful. Okay. Um, that just got me thinking, do you have a Facebook group for your, for business owners that use you? Yes. So, okay. well, it's a free community. I don't have an actual... Oh, wait. Like, I actually think I've gone live with you. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. You helped... Oh, see? You helped yeah. me when I launched the society. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Well, so let's talk about the power of Facebook groups. Yeah. So I really built... Started building my business with Facebook groups, which I know a lot of people have because those communities are there. And that's exactly what they were built for. Mark Zuckerberg wanted groups in order for people who may not otherwise be able to be connected. The groups connect them. And that's exactly what they have done for me. They, um, you know, different Facebook groups, you know, the rising tide society, the gold digger podcast, all these different Facebook groups I have, you know, cause people, business owners are there. They're looking for resources. So I literally would make it make time every single day to search those groups for any copyright questions, any trademark questions. And I would chime in, not even just trying to sell myself, just, you know, chime in and say, Hey, I'm a trademark attorney. Like this is my answer because sometimes people chime in and they're not an attorney. They're not a trusted source. So I would, you know, definitely let them know I was an attorney, but I wouldn't necessarily say, Oh, you need to hire me or, you know, contact me for more info. I would just give them value and wait for them to contact me. And that is how I have really grown my business. Oh my gosh. So for all of you guys listening in, I think that what I want you to really get from Andrea is that she is very resourceful, very resourceful. And I mean, was that something you saw your parents do, Andrea? Like how did you, because most people, they're just not. They And every, actually, I'll take that back. Every single human is a resourceful person, but it takes them a while or some people never figure out that they are. So you had to have had that modeled for you, like obviously. So can you think of a story? Um, I honest, I don't know. Like, I just know that my parents were always very, you know, very hardworking. They actually didn't even, my mom never graduated from high school. My dad like dropped out and went back to high school. So like I'm on a very different path than they were, but they were always the ones pushing me and telling me like, you literally can do anything you want. 
and Mm -hmm. almost to a fault, I believed them. And just having them always reinforce the fact that, you know, you can do this, you know, put your mind to it. The whole mindset thing, like they really pushed that on me because they created the path for me. So I don't know if they necessarily like, if I noticed the resourcefulness in them, but they were definitely the motivation and the, you know, the pushing. Well, I think what's important is that they helped mold your subconscious mind by saying things like you can literally do whatever you want. So if you heard that all the time, that becomes part of your DNA, right? And so when you truly believe in every cell of your body that you are capable of anything, of course you, you figure it out all the time because your body believes you can figure it out because that's what you heard your entire life, even if you didn't see things. So I think they were, you know, like that is so huge. You guys, words are so powerful. And that's why I think it's so important with us as parents that we are constantly speaking life as much as possible because it's creating, like, that's why you are who you are. Like if your parents would have been saying something different, you probably still would have become, you know, Andrea, attorney at law, but um, it might've taken you a lot longer because you would have been messed up here. Right. So that's what I always say. Like my mom, even though my childhood was cray cray. Okay. The thing she always told me was that my words were so powerful. So she wouldn't even let me say out loud that I was sick. She'd always say, whatever you want to be true, you say it out loud. And so I know it's like to the extreme. Okay. Like it was very extreme, but that is something that I, that stuck with me. So I would always say things out loud, even though I didn't believe it deep down. And then all of a sudden, you know, I become successful because I had said it enough times. Right. So, okay. So let's talk about this. And when we're on the subject of Facebook groups, I get sometimes annoyed and I'm really, I'm trying to work on my mindset because I've created so much amazing stuff for people. And I put everything out there online and I see people copy me. I see people even have the guts to message me and say, oh my gosh, your post was so good. I tweaked it a little bit and reposted it. Thank you for inspiring me. And I don't, I I mean, literally that's happened to me. Like I can't even count how many times people have actually had the balls to say that to me. And then I'm like, I don't even know how to respond to that because legally I think that's illegal. Second, like, how do you even live with yourself? Hello. So what do you say to those people? Because some some of those people are honestly probably listening in right now. And I think a lot of people just don't know. I don't think people are necessarily like malicious and they're like, oh, I want to steal this. I think they just think they can. And it's just like, oh, it's like we're all helping each other. So what do you say to that? Because how, what, first of all, should I do as a business owner to protect myself? And secondly, let's talk about those people and what they should be not doing. Okay. So we'll switch the order up. So (laughs) those people that do steal your content, whether it's your photos, your, you know, beautiful, long thought out, thoughtful Instagram, Facebook captions, it's copyright infringement. That is illegal. Is so depends how much the caption, like if they're stealing your captions, it depends how much they actually change as to whether it's copyright infringement. I've seen people go, this story totally inspired me and they will take my entire caption and then not even tag me. Okay. Yeah. So that is copyright infringement. That's what I thought. Yeah. So I know I tell this to a lot of people and they're like, Oh, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. So photos, number one, do not use another photo unless you took it or unless you have a license to use it. And when I say a license, that can be just something as simple as ask, you know, if it's on Instagram, DM the person, ask them if they can, you know, if you have their permission to repost it. And if they say, yes, there's your permission. That is a license. Now, yeah. So that it's so as you have as, it in you have it in writing. It's in the DM. She said, "Yes, I can repost this." Yes. Okay. And then for uh, I mean, same thing for Instagram captions or any content. You have to have a license, or you have to be the creator of the content. Okay. And so, all right. So that's interesting. Now I'm a business owner, and I see somebody has has infringed on me. Is that what you call it? Infringed. Okay. So do you just report the post or is that when I screenshot it and I send it over to you and I say, Hey, here you deal with this. What, how does, how do you do that? 
so just because typically on Instagram and Facebook, you can, there's like the little drop down, you can hit report. Well, that usually doesn't do anything because they don't see what's wrong with it. So I have a program for my clients where they just send it to me and I submit what's called a DMCA takedown notice. It's a digital the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And by law, once you submit that takedown request and provide the necessary information, the platform has to remove that content within like 24 or 48 business hours. Okay. Okay. Wow. And so do you do stuff like that for people that are a part of your membership that we're going to talk about later? Uh, so it, that is... N- I can do that. It's not part of the month, what's included monthly, but it's part of a different little subscription that okay. I have. Okay. Yeah. But what I like about what you do, and for those of you guys listening in, this is why I chose her, is she does flat fees. So most attorneys, they will charge by the hour. And I'm talking like, if you email them, you're going to get charged $250 for like an email that took them five minutes to respond to. So uh, um, they <laughs> I don't like to say that they steal your money, but it just feels like it goes quickly. Um, yeah. And so with her, it's just like, it's extremely affordable, I think. And you're getting the best service. Um, and I know you didn't know I was going to pitch you right now, but just <laughs> FYI, <laughs> I think it's awesome. So, okay. I have another question because this is coming up for me right now. I, as you said that I go, oh my gosh, I posted I found this awesome quote that somebody posted on their Instagram and I reposted it on my feed and it has their name on it and I tagged them. Is that enough or no? Would I still need to reach out to that person and say, hey, can I repost this? But I gave them credit. You know what I'm saying? Like, So first and foremost, it doesn't matter if you give credit. That doesn't relieve you of copyright infringement. But within you know, Instagram, you have like the regram app and like different ways to share things. If you're doing it within the Instagram platform, it is not copyright infringement because it's, it goes according to Instagram's terms of use. Okay. So if you read the little fine print, which I'm sure nobody has, (laughs) if you're, if they use like the regram app or like they share your post, their stories, sharing it within the app through one of those modes it is not copyright infringement because it abides by the terms of use. Okay. Now, if you, if somebody is posting, if you post a photo and then a random person like screenshots it and they post it on their Instagram and it's not through like the regram app or something within Instagram, you're just screenshotting and reposting that is copyright infringement. Okay. Wow. This is so good because these are all like the nitty gritty. This isn't like the feel good stuff that we normally talk about, but this is so important to understand because all of you guys that are listening in, you want to be CEOs, right? You want to be the CEO of your digital business. And these are the things that you need to understand. Even when you hire out an attorney, right? You're going to have an amazing attorney on your team. It's important for you to understand concepts, right? Yes. So, uh, I'm really glad that you're reading the fine print for all of us. Okay. Because a lot of us could get in trouble. So this is what I want to know. Do you have any crazy stories? Like, have you seen any of your clients like straight up get jacked because they infringed and stole somebody's copy on accident? Like, have you, tell me a crazy story. So here's a crazy one. They didn't actually didn't end up becoming my client, but somebody, she was a photographer, but she attended some event where she was just taking pictures. She wasn't there like as media or anything. Well, Gwen, I think it was Gwen, is Gwen Stefani or Katy Perry. She got a photo of them while performing and they posted it on their Instagram. Cause she, she posted on her Instagram and then they reposted it on their Instagram just by screenshotting. And that is 100% copyright infringement. So she didn't, she didn't actually end up retaining me, but, and I don't know if she ended up doing anything about it. I think her whole thing was she just wanted the credit. Right. Just tag me at least like help. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Like you're this huge superstar, like just help somebody like help a small yeah. photographer out. So that's all she wanted. So I don't know if she, that's what she actually ended up getting, but I told her, I was like, we can do something about this because like that is a hundred percent copyright infringement. Wow. I think that's so important to understand because I think even Gwen Stefani, like she probably just didn't even realize like when you do that, you're just like, oh, 
you know, let me share it. This is a whole new world, this digital age that we're living in. And it's just like, we have to learn the new rules to live by when it comes to being online. So what are some of the things that we as business owners can do to protect ourselves online? So number one, you need a trademark, at least one. Um, there are many things that can be protected within your business a lot of business owners don't realize this, but especially as a digital business, you thrive on IP, intellectual property. That is the only thing that you have. You have digital products. That is intellectual property. Even if you print it out, yeah, it's a tangible product, but it's the intellectual property within that that has value. It doesn't matter that it's printed out on paper it's the intellectual property that has value. So you have to protect everything that you're producing. Whether you have a course, you need to protect that with a copyright. Your brand name, you need to protect that with a trademark. Your course name needs to be protected with a trademark. Your podcast name needs to be protected with a trademark. Photos need to be protected with a copyright. Like everything, everything that you're producing has to be protected. And especially if you're, as a business owner, I know you probably hear this all the time, but as a business owner, you need to be thinking about your exit. How are you getting out of this business? If you're not thinking about that, then you're just an employee. So you really have to think about what's my exit. And when you're thinking about your exit, how are you going to sell your business? If you don't have your trademark registrations, if you don't have your copyright registrations, you have nothing to sell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because with, I mean, with the brick well, because and- the people can just copy it. I mean, exactly. Yeah. What's the, what's so special about it? If you don't have this trademark, I'll just go do it my own way. Why do I need to buy it from you? Yeah. And as when you go to sell your business, when I sold my clothing store, the brand name that, I mean, that's a line item. Whenever you go to sell, like having that trademark, it's goodwill. That is something that is actually valued. And if you don't have a trademark on it, I mean, there's a value to it, but if you don't have a registration, then somebody else can come up and snatch it, snatch it up. They can infringe on your stuff. They can, it just loses the potential value that, that it could be when you don't have a registration. So, okay. Let's talk about this. What if somebody goes to file for a trademark and they get denied at that point, should they change their brand? So it depends um, uh, everybody's favorite lawyer answer. <laughs> it depends. But if you, so when I apply for registrations for my clients, I do a search up front, and that's pretty much required for all of my clients. I tell them, you know, we have to do the search because we have to know what we're facing going in. And even if you, if you think, oh, I've searched Google, I've searched social media, I own the domain name, I'm good to go. No, that does not mean you're good to go. We have to do a comprehensive trademark search because trademark infringement not only occurs when it's the same exact name, it can be a similar name offering similar goods or services. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you can have two businesses with the same exact name, but they offer completely different goods or services so they can both have a registration. Okay. So you... When a client approaches me, you know, we run the trademark search and I tell them, you know, this is either a low risk, it's a moderate risk, or it's a high risk. And we probably shouldn't file this application and you should probably rebrand. Um, but we analyze every that everything beforehand. So we know going in what we're looking at. Okay. Um, sometimes I tell clients, you know, we'll, we will get the registration, but we're going to have to get creative. We have to, you know, we may have to do this or that it's just not going to be smooth sailing, which everybody hopes for, but that's getting to be more rare today because there's so many trademarks. There's so many new businesses. So it's getting harder to have a smooth trademark application process. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot to it. (laughs) There is. How do you stay up to date with everything that's changing and online? Yeah. So the, luckily the USPTO, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, they keep everybody updated with their blog and their updates. And they actually just had a very big update. So it used to be, if you were a foreign applicant, somebody outside of the United States and you were filing a United States trademark, anybody could, not anybody, but a foreign attorney could file an application for you. Well, as of last week, that is no longer. So 
foreign applicants have to have a U.S. trademark attorney on their application. And luckily, like I'm, I'm very happy about that because I've even ran into this problem where, you know, there's an overseas manufacturer who, you know, may or may not be still producing the goods that they applied for, but the, you know, the contact that they have on the application is not a good contact. So there's no way to get in touch with them. So it just, you have to spend more money. It's just a huge headache. And with you know online businesses the trademark office has seen more and more fraudulent applications so by using only us trademark attorneys it's really a way to combat the fraud and the ha- not having good contact information for different applicants okay so in the mommy millionaire community we asked if people had questions for you Okay. And you've already actually answered a lot of them. So I wanted to take the time right now just to ask you a couple. Um, and so this comes out from Casey Salcedo, who is an avid listener of the mommy millionaire podcast. We love you, Casey. She's also in the millionaire society. So we're all like sisters in there. Um, she said, is there any copyright laws against listening or listing a song to go listen to? For instance, you're writing on a certain topic and you reference a song to go listen to. So I know for a fact, she's writing a book plus we're on a blog. So how does that work? Yeah, that's a really good question, Casey. So if that is a good question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that. So if you're referencing the song saying, Hey, you know, listen to this song, Mm -hmm. that is not copyright infringement because you're not using the actual content of the song. Okay. Oh, yep. That totally makes sense. So if she's like, Hey, I want to go or go listen to oceans by Hillsong and then journal about it. That, that is not okay. Great example. I love that. Super easy. So actually that has me ask you a question. Okay. Let's say I, cause I was just thinking about doing this. Now I don't want to give my idea away, whatever. All right. I'm giving it away. So I wanted to create a playlist for everybody in the millionaire S society. And if I shared that with them in the, only in the society, is that copyright? Cause it would be an actual playlist with all of the songs. So it could be because, so I, I'm going to correlate this to a cookbook recipes are not eligible for, typically they're not eligible for copyright infringement, but a cookbook may be eligible for copyright protection because of the order that the recipes are in. Okay. So the order that the songs are in, that could be protected with a copyright. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. And I've also seen a lot of my girls that are in my society and my mastermind, they have fitness stuff going on and they'll make playlists. So those of you guys listening in, it seems like it's okay to do. Yeah. Possibly. All right. Okay. So I know you can't say like for sure, but you know, an example. Okay. So Nicole Davidson, who is amazing. She's an awesome photographer in Arizona. Um, she asked this, I would love to know what the law is with a company using one of your images that they got from another blogger shoot without permission. And they're using it for their own advertising. How do you go about getting payment for that? And the copyright laws with it being my image and work. It's a well-known multi-million dollar company too. Oh, Nicole, you need to call me. Um, Uh, (laughs) yeah. So, okay. So let me think this out loud. So she's a photographer. She took the photo of a blogger, correct? Yep. yep. And then that blogger posted the photo Mm -hmm. and then some other company. So was the company is, was the company, the one that's a blogger may have been like advertising or sponsoring because if so, let me just, talk about it both. Oh, oh, okay. So like if she was wearing their clothes or something like that, for instance, and then she posts about it and tags that company, that company actually does have the rights. No, no. Okay. No. Okay. okay. So let's, okay. Let's take, let's break it down. Here we go. This is, okay. This is really good because I think a lot of people have the same, there's a lot of photographers that are listening in right now. Yeah. And influencers all the time, they get, they get this messed up. So, okay. You have your photographer And then you have your influencer and then you have your company that may be sponsoring the influencer. Mm -hmm. So the company has a contract with the influencer. Yep. Now as a photographer, you may not know what's in that contract. The company may have, may say like, we have the right to use those, the photos that you post. Yep. 
but it will depend on what is between what contract is between the photographer and the influencer to get those photos taken. So if there's no contract, then the photographer owns the copyright and the influencer only has a license to post those photos. Now, and that doesn't mean that the influencer has a license to give to the company. The company has to get a license from the photographer. Okay. I hope I'm not talking crazy oh, here. This is totally uh, making sense. Totally. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So honestly, it might like in this situation, if it was the company that the influencer was, um, advertising, mm-hmm. then it might be on the influencer. Cause she may have said, yeah, you can have a license to use these photos, but she may not have had a license to give. Yep. But I mean, it just depends. Like it, so, it, it could be a million variations here. So now that Nicole's in this spot, who should she talk to first? Should she, I think she should go directly to the blogger and say, what was the contract between you and such and such company? Yeah. So if it was the actual company that, you know, the influencer was wearing the blogger, if she, she was wearing that company's clothes and she was doing the ad for them, she may ask, she wants to go to the blogger and say, Hey, you know, like, what did you tell this company? Like they're using my photos and they didn't have permission. But on the other hand, if they were a multi multi million dollar company, they know that they have to go to the photographer. Right. So like, I'll give you like, there's this comp, there's this clothing company that I work with and the contract that I signed with them is anything I post that I tag them in, they have the legal rights to, and I signed that away. So all of my photos, I usually just, most of them I take on my own with my iPhone. So I don't have to worry about it. So in that case, it's fine. But if another photographer would have taken those pictures of me, then I would have had to set it up with the photographer and said, Hey, I've signed a contract with this person. And are you okay with releasing it? Or are you going to charge me more basically? Right. And it it all comes down to what the photographer is going to charge. Cause most likely she's just going to charge you more in order to give another license to that other company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys, this is so good. So good. I'm obsessed with this podcast right now because I love the nitty gritty of the stuff that people ignore because this is what really, why does this matter? Why, why does this actually matter? Because how expensive is it to get sued by somebody? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't got time for that. Nobody has time to get sued. Okay. And I'll tell you a big thing that's going around right now. You may use a photo. You may have used a photo years ago and now that photographer is finding out that they can pursue anybody that has used their photos and they're probably finding out how easy it is to find the people ha- that have used the photo. So they just basically send out a cease and desist letter to everybody that has used the photo, send the letter, tell them to stop using it, and then give a demand of you know ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And then they'll see who pays, who doesn't pay. And then who doesn't pay, they will investigate them more and see, okay, is this person worth pursuing, you know, for more money? Do we, can we actually sue them? Is it worth it? So that is the number one reason why you don't want to use anybody else's photo because they are now coming after people. It hasn't been so bad in the past, but just because of technology and how easy it is to find the infringers, that's a real thing. And it, people, I see it all the time in Facebook groups. They're like, Oh, I got the cease and desist letters. It's a scam. And half the people are like, yeah, don't worry about it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like this is a real thing. So yeah, if you, if that happens to you, you need to take care of it. It's not something to ignore. Okay. So here's another question. I see a lot of people post, you know, those white and black, like quote cards, you know what I'm saying? Like that have nobody's name on it. And, and it's clearly like, this was screenshotted. Like, this is not yours. Like you didn't create this cause it looks old. And I'm like, I'm talking big time influencers use these things. What happens in that case? Because there's not really a way, I mean, I guess the person that first created that knows and can go after them or can they even because it doesn't have their name on it? Like, how does that work? Cause I see so many and I'm like, <gasps> yeah. So it, again, it depends, Yeah. <laughs> but in that situation, what it will depend on is 
what's actually on the graphic. Because in order to be eligible for copyright protection, you have to meet the minimum, the minimum creativity standard. And it's a low barrier, but they have, the copyright office has specifically said standard characters and letters do not qualify for copyright protection. So the design of the graphic, if it's just letters and, you know, just maybe a square box, that's not eligible for copyright protection. The actual content within the quote, if it's long enough, that might be eligible for copyright protection. I I don't know. It's just, it has to be, you know, a, a long quote that is something more than everything happens for a reason. So the graphic itself probably isn't eligible for protection. And then the content within it, the words, it has to be, you know, very creative in order for that to qualify for protection. Wow. Okay. So that's interesting. That's good to know. I was, um, so I always do like research on people who aren't necessarily like competition, but whatever. So I was doing, um, research on, cause I'm coming out with a new book in 2020. And so I just did my book rep- proposal and it's going to be all about sales. It's going to be awesome. I have a meeting with, uh, my number one person on Friday that I want to pick up the book. So I'm hoping everything goes well, but anyway, so I'm doing research on just like who else is in this space. That's, that's selling books. Okay. And so there's a very well-known name, which I won't mention her name right now, but people can probably guess who I'm talking about. She speaks all over the place. Like she's really well-known right now. She happens to be from the same city as me, which is funny because we're from a small town. And I went to look at her reviews for her last book that just came out and she got slashed. Oh oh my gosh. Like bad in these reviews on Amazon saying she steals people's content, that she, she has nothing new to say, like all this stuff. And it's because she, she's taking like concepts, like everything happens for a reason. And then writing five chapters on it. And people are like, that's not new. Um, and like, they're trying to make it sound like she is a copyright, like infringer, like that she's not original. What do you say to that? Because it's like, you know what? Most of these concepts, like, guess what? They've been around for ages and ages. Like, you know, most of us are using the universal laws that have been around for thousands of years and we're just putting our own spin on it. So, you know, I felt bad for her when I was reading this. I was like, God, like people are mean, (laughs) first of all. But then I I was like, oh, well, they kind of have a point. Like at what point do you go, like, you can't, you can't post everything happens for a reason and say your name. Like, like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like you didn't come up with that. And that's the kind of stuff she's doing. So I think like, obviously that's not copyright infringement is what you're saying. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure I know exactly who you're talking about. And I didn't even know that that was going on with her until I'm in another course and people were talking about it. And I was oh, like, really? So other people are talking about it too. Okay. I, yeah. I thought I just found the gold mine a couple months ago. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Like one of the guest experts in this course was like, oh, so-and-so is getting a lot of backlash because they're saying she's not coming up with original ideas, but nothing is original these days. Right. You're just repackaging it and saying it in your own words. So basically like they would have to be saying that she is copyright, like she's infringing on a concept or an idea and that's not eligible for copyright protection. And I mean, people like nothing is original. So like, are you going to tell me that everybody who hosts a mastermind, they're infringing on Napoleon Hill who that's literally, okay. That is so weird that you just said that. Cause in my mind, I was literally thinking about Napoleon Hill and masterminds. That is freaking crazy that you just said that. Sorry. Yeah. Like everybody in business. I mean, if you know about a mastermind, then you probably know that Napoleon Hill originated the mastermind. Really? Yes. Yeah. And you can't say that everybody who has a mastermind now is infringing on him. Like it's an idea, it's a concept, and that is not eligible for protection. Now, I I haven't read the specifics on what like people are saying about the whole issue um, with that other person, but I mean, you just really have to be original. And even if you're not being original, just come out and say it. Like this is not my original idea. I am repackaging it and telling you how it worked for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you, maybe the issue was that she's trying to say that she was the original or something. Like, I, I don't know. I don't think she was doing that at all. I think she was just saying, these are my ideas. And I don't think she was, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. I, yeah. 
I don't know, but I mean, she's not infringing. I don't, I mean, I haven't read any of her books. Me neither. Book, I have books. So yeah. I don't know any specifics, but I mean, maybe her books didn't infringe on somebody else's copyright. I don't, I don't know, but to say as a whole, her concepts or ideas that that's copying, it's not, maybe it is copying, but it's not infringement because the laws are in place in order for there to be some copying because nothing is original today. Nothing is original, but you have to be, you just can't copy somebody so much to where you know for a fact that your work was derived from this other person's work. Mm. Okay. Wow. This was heavy stuff we're talking about today. I feel like, because it's so much, well, I think everybody's just going to be much more aware about okay, I need to protect myself. And so there's a lot of people listening in right now that are creating courses. You got to protect your course. You're creating a group coaching program. You got to, you got to protect that because there's a process. And I wish I would have known this when I first started coming out with my own stuff, because now people are trying to sell it like it's theirs. I'm like, okay, but it's fine. It's okay. I, it's okay. All right. Um, because I really truly believe that like people that are copycats, they only can go so far because eventually it gets found out that you're a copycat. Like you've got to come up with something new and something original. Okay. And it's not original, but it's, you know, more of whatever. And right now, like we're in the process of creating the mommy millionaire coaching certification program. And that's going to be huge. Yeah. You're going to get that all trademarked and copyrighted. Right. Um, Right. So can I say that or should I cut this out of this podcast? No, say I'm, I actually was talking to somebody else a couple of weeks ago who has completely separate, not even like business or life coaching, but it's coaching for a form of yoga. And I told her I was, cause she was asking me about franchising. I was like, you don't want to franchise this. You just want to license your coaching program and yep. the certification. That's exactly what we're going to do. That's exactly what we're going to do. So, um, anyways, but with that, like I've been coached by so many different people. I'm taking what I loved from them, what I've done on my own, and I'm putting it all into a certification program that is a process that will help people transform to become financially independent. And I'm so freaking excited about it. But I was like, that's one way I'm going to protect myself. But then even at the same time, like I know that there's probably going to become coaches, like there's going to be the mommy millionaire coaches that will go out on their own. They're going to branch out and take what they like from my program and create their own. And that's just something you have to be, there's an abundant mindset there. It's just like, it is, it is. So, um, I love everything we talked about today. And one of the things you said, you had like a special gift for all the mommy millionaires listening in right now. Yes, yes, yes. So with my new membership, which is called the legalpreneur membership, uh, we're all entrepreneurs these days, but you have to be legally protected. So you need to join the Legalpreneur membership. And as a listener, you are getting $30 off, whether you pay monthly or yearly, you get $30 off with promo code mommy. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's an incredible men- membership. You get unlimited access with emails. You get up to 60 minutes and phone calls every month. You get document review. So up to 30 pages where basically so far it's been a lot of like reviewing privacy policies, terms of service, you know, service contracts, just reviewing any contracts that you have to make sure there's no loopholes. So, and then 15% off of anything else that you need, all of that is covered under one fee, one flat fee. Um, cause I really just don't like keeping track of my time for how long it takes me to respond to this email or how long we're on a phone call. So it's just all included for one fee. And then once you've been a member for three months, you get a free IP audit. And that is where I go into your business and dissect everything and tell you exactly what has to be protected with a copyright, with a trademark, getting your stuff, telling you exactly what has to be protected. And then after six months, you get a free trademark search. And then at 12 months, you get three trademark applications at 50% off. So half off. And then if you pay in full for the year, you just get all those monthly benefits up front. So it's a killer deal. It's, it's incredible. Like people are absolutely, absolutely loving it. I love it. Well, I know I'm a part of it and um, I'm hoping some more mommies get in on this deal just because I mean, the fact that it's like instant access and I don't have to like pay $250 every time I want to talk to you is really nice. 
So you guys, if you're a business owner and you don't have an attorney already, like, please, 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 I'm begging you to look into Andrea and see if her membership would be a good fit for you. And if you guys have any questions about it, please feel free to DM me and ask me about it on my social media. That's totally fine. Or, you know, reach out to Andrea. So Andrea, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I appreciate all of the knowledge that you spit out for us. Like it was serious gold. And for those of you guys that caught anything out of this episode, please take a screenshot of the podcast and tag both me and Andrea and all of her socials and everything will be linked up to the show notes and let us know what you, what you learned from it, because that's what keeps us going. That's why she's giving out free content is because she knows that it's serving people. And I'm just so proud of you for being the mommy millionaire that you are, Andrea, like going out there making no excuses and being so resourceful to start your own business and just make it thriving with, and you have like a brand new baby at home. Like it's crazy the stuff that you're doing. I'm just so proud of you because what you're doing is you're making it known for all mommy millionaires out there that truly like anything is possible. And so I just thank you and honor you for that. And, uh, remember you guys, mommy millionaire live is just around the corner. So if you loved what you just learned from Andrea, imagine this on steroids when you're in a room full of amazing, ambitious entrepreneurs that are going to be working with you on your business for two whole days. And, uh, you guys, it's just, there's something so special about being in an event space surrounded by people that are all committed to going to the next level. So make sure to head to mommymillionaire.co and pick up your tickets today. And I love you guys so, so much. Make sure to protect your business. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, guys, this is going to be the exit intro for Andrea Sager. Um, Hey, mommy millionaires, let's recap really quickly what we learned from Andrea. So first of all, you want to protect your business. Make sure that you are trademarking the names of your courses, the names of everything that you're creating. It's so important to make sure that you're copywriting all of the material that are a part of your courses, a part of your group coaching, any materials that you're giving out to people, make sure that you put a copyright on it. Okay. And Andrea can help you with that. Second thing is this, um, I love that we talk about the original content stuff, how there's nothing really that original, but make sure if you're sharing things that other people have created, just reach out to them and say, Hey, would you mind if I shared this? Okay. And I think most people would love for you to share things. I love when people share my things. I just like to get credit for that. Right. So it's just really important what you get always put out there. You're going to get back. Right. And, uh, that's one thing I think that is so important to understand Uh, make sure (laughs) that you are protecting yourself because as somebody that has been involved in the lawsuits in the past, trust me, they are long, they are tedious, and they are so much, it's it's very emotionally draining. You don't want to be involved in them. Sometimes there's nothing you can do, but in this case, you can do something to protect yourself and that is going above and beyond to make sure that you are protecting yourself, okay? So I really recommend that all of you guys hop into Andrea's membership program. It is so affordable. We're going to link up all that info. Remember to use promo code mommy to get $30 off your first month, plus all those extra bonuses that she talked about. Okay. And, um, another thing that I want you just to take in is that Andrea just saw a need in the community. And she said, you know what? I'm going to fill this. She didn't go, her mind didn't go to the possibility of all the things that could go wrong because guess what? Oh, there's a lot of things that could go wrong when you're first starting your business. No, she just went and said, how am I going to make this work? And she let her imagination do the work for her in the right way. You know, when you believe there's a will, there's always a way. And so I hope you guys take that away from today's episode. I love you guys so, so much. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to mommymillionaire.co. Make sure to follow Mommy Millionaire on Spotify and subscribe on iTunes. And it would mean the world to me if you left a five-star review of the show. And as always, ladies, go out there and get what you want.